Hey everyone, it's Jeff, and today I want to talk about the movie theater experience. There's been a lot of discourse online lately about movie theaters and the way that that experience of going to the theater has changed pretty dramatically since COVID. There's kind of like pre-COVID movie theater experience and post-COVID and movie theater etiquette and movie theaters are closing. Over 3,000 theaters apparently closed last year and there's a ton of different things going on in the business of movies that also relate back to home entertainment and home viewing that I want to talk about here. One of the craziest things happening in the movie theater world is all of the talk of consolidation and uh, movie theater chains going up for sale, movie theaters closing, like I mentioned, uh, potential mergers. You know, we've heard could AMC be merging with like Apple? Could Apple be getting into movie theaters or Amazon? We've uh, saw Draft House has put themselves allegedly up for sale recently. Uh, some of my favorite local theaters growing up, Chunky's Cinema in New Hampshire, they're closing all of their locations except for one. And so movie theaters are kind of hurting everywhere. And it's a little bit of a crazy time to be in this business. There's a lot of data floating around. There's a lot of financial things floating around. And I sort of think it's up to our generation to figure this out in the future. How are movie theaters going to remain profitable and available? And if you're one of those people who's motivated about that, maybe you'd consider a degree program from today's video sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University. SNHU has one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree programs in the country. And if you're up to the challenge to solve this movie theater problem, their data analytics program may be of interest to you. Data analytics is all about gathering data, quantitative, qualitative data to try to solve business challenges. You'd learn how to use industry tools to assess these challenges, put together reports and communicate that, learn all the soft skills you need to present this this data to company leadership and who knows maybe someday you'll be the one that creates the next great movie theater chain or figures out what's going on in this industry and solves the financial problems and challenges that they're facing. SNHU is also seriously affordable. I know how much college costs. Their online degree programs are some of the most affordable in the country. So if you want to learn more, go to snhu.edu slash Jeff Rossio. That link will also be in the pinned comment and the video description. You can head over there and request free information on the program and get all the information you need on SNHU. So thanks to our sponsor, SNHU. And now let's talk a little bit about that data because it's a little startling. On a pre-COVID world, 2019 being one of the peak years, 2018 also being a peak year for movie theaters, the domestic box office totals for just the United States were almost $12 billion, between 11 to $12 billion. And that was consistent from 2015 all the way through 2019. Now, of course, in 2020, COVID hits, huge hit, $2 billion. Come back up in 2021 to 4 billion. 2022, we're at 7 billion. 2023, even with Barbie and Oppenheimer and Barbenheimer driving people back to the theaters, we're at 8.9 billion. So the industry has not crawled back to pre COVID numbers. In fact, it's hovering around numbers right now from like 2005 to 2006, which, if you adjust for inflation, means that the box office is really low because as you know, the last few years, inflation has been crazy high. So even when it makes $9 billion in 2023, adjusted for inflation, that's probably worth a hell of a lot less than the almost $12 billion in 2018. So what's going on? I think that's a huge question that somebody needs to figure out, somebody needs to answer. But I have a few hypotheses on, on why this is happening. And one of them is definitely movie theater etiquette. Pre-COVID, I could go to a movie theater on a Friday night, opening night, and it would be a pretty good experience. Uh, phones were mostly away, people weren't talking through the movie, and it was mostly respectful. I'd say 95% of the time, a respectful audience with a good movie theater etiquette, and it was a good experience. Since post-COVID, I don't know what it is. Maybe smartphones more accessible. Maybe people have just kind of lost the social norms and what you're supposed to do at a movie theater. But post-COVID, every time I've gone, I've had people on phones the entire movie. I have had people talking throughout the entire movie. I have had people on tablets in my movie theater. I have had people bringing kids into R-rated movies. Just crazy stuff that... I didn't see before and I don't know when the country lost their minds but apparently it was somewhere around 2020 when it goes to movie theaters because everyone just seemingly forgot how to act and so for me it's definitely resulted in me going to the theater less 
because I am annoyed. I'm not having a good experience there. And it's also resulted in me going to very specific chains and being very selective with what I see in the movie theater. I used to see a ton of stuff in the theater. Now I'm very selective. And now when I go, I'm looking at, I want to go to Draft House or I want to go to a local independent theater that I know is going to have a, a smaller audience, more respectful audience. I don't necessarily want to go to the big AMC or the Cinemark or the Regal because it's honestly kind of a shit show every time I've gone in there. I'll say the quality of those theaters too, back in that 2016 to 2019 time period, a lot of these AMCs, Cinemarks, Regals, you know, whoever your local theater chain is, a lot of them were updating with new recliners and, you know, all kinds of new seating and new menu options. And it seems like post COVID, we, we have those things. Those are now implemented. But every time I've gone in, the chairs are falling apart. Sometimes the recliners don't work. The chairs are ripped. The food is no good anymore. Like you can't get good food. The popcorn is stale. The staffing is super low and the staffing is down. So you get a really strange kind of empty experience. There's really, it feels like you're just kind of going in to watch a movie. It's not it's not an experience anymore. It feels no different than if I made popcorn in my microwave, went down into the basement and watched a movie at my house. And that's sad because that's what the movie theater experience has to be to survive in a world of streaming and home entertainment. So I think the movie theaters have a problem. They have a problem with the fact that they're not a destination anymore. And they're also just not as cheap and as easy to go to as they used to be. So you're not just going to go see a movie every Friday because that could run you a hundred dollars every Friday. If you get a meal, you try to eat at the theater, get some popcorn, the tickets are $15. If you need a babysitter, forget it. Now you're upwards of 150, $200 to see a movie. Like it's getting very, very expensive for families to go watch movies. Whereas you used to be able to get $5 tickets in some places still do it on a Tuesday, but you know, matinees even now are eight to ten dollars. The premium format IMAX is like twenty dollars plus, and it's getting a little crazy. It honestly is. And that's where I see like the draft house model and the independent local theater model coming back and making a comeback. And I hope whoever buys Draft House, because they're they're not selling for financial reasons, as far as I can tell. They've had good numbers at the box office. They've started franchising out locations. That model, although some of you guys might not like it because yeah, they deliver food to you during the movie and everything, but I would so much rather be interrupted by a respectful waiter bringing me food or asking me if I need a drink and they kind of pick and choose their times in the movies. They know when to come in, when not to. They're very good at that. I'd rather that than people on their phones lighting up their faces the whole time, talking across the road to somebody else. Draft House doesn't allow it. They'll kick you out for stuff like that. Places like that where you can still get a great experience and you feel like you're going to the movies, right? Like that's, that's what they're missing. Going to the movies is missing. From the whole experience. You know, I really, I, I hope they survive. I hope that maybe the studios can work out giving them a little bit better cut on ticket sales so that they can make some more money on actual ticket sales because they really do not make much at all, especially in the first couple weeks of a movie. So then they have to jack up the concession prices to, uh, to, to offset that. And it just honestly turns into something that isn't, isn't as fun anymore at the big chains. And even at the big chains, even at an AMC, I had great experiences. I saw Hereditary there. And it was amazing, an amazing experience. I've seen uh, Interstellar at an AMC IMAX theater, and it was awesome. The midnight showings of horror movies and Harry Potter, I saw all those at my local AMC. They were awesome community experiences. I felt like I was going to the movies and experience it with people in a crowd, which I love, but I've lost that. And I don't think movie theaters are dying. I think what's happening is... Like a lot of other things in entertainment, this landscape has changed so, so much in the last four years. Whether it was streaming, home entertainment, physical media, digital platforms, movie theaters, uh, TV, everything, sports, live sports, everything that has to do with entertainment 
has been drastically changed since COVID. And they've all had to adapt and they're all still learning. And I think movie theaters, they're not dying, they're adapting, they're changing. And I think they're trying to figure out a model that works. And they need to update their technology. You know, all of these places need to start developing technology that can match what people have at home. The last thing you want to do is have somebody who watched a movie on Netflix the night before on their 85-inch TV in their living room, which looked awesome, 4K and HDR, and they go to their local movie theater and it looks like a VHS tape is playing up on the screen because they've got an old digital projector and their sound system's not updated and the projector lens hasn't been clean and the screen is dirty and it just it's a bad presentation that will hurt and that will turn that person off because they know they can get better at home. So you have to make it an experience. You know, the, the way that Taylor Swift did uh, the Errors Tour in the movie theater, super smart. That's an experience. Barbenheimer was an experience. People dressed up in pink. They went to see Barbie with their friends. They took pictures. Oppenheimer became a whole thing. It was, you know, that was an experience that drove box office. The Dune popcorn bucket, as silly as you think that might be, that became a shared community experience. And people were going to the theaters to watch Dune and get their silly popcorn buckets and hang out with an audience of super fans. Those are the experiences that have to continue to be created because without those, movie theaters may die. And that's a horrible, horrible thing for the industry. I don't ever want to see that. But I do think they have a lot of adapting and a lot of uh, updating and changing to do if they want to remain successful in 2024 and beyond. So how's your movie theater experience been lately? Let me know in the comments because I've talked to a lot of people. We have a lot of shared experiences. It feels like it's gone downhill. Maybe we're sticklers because we're the big movie fans, but it, it just feels like it's not something that's respected anymore. And that's why I've gravitated towards gra uh, draft house or local theaters. Like they're just better experiences, better environments, but I, be super curious. Maybe different parts of the country are better. Maybe LA has etiquette that Boston, New Hampshire don't have. I don't know. You tell me, but I'd be very curious to hear. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube for all the latest on movies, home entertainment, home theater, and of course, just anything in the entertainment world related to movies we're going to cover here on the channel. Also, make sure to follow me on social media. The Instagram account is almost at 225,000 followers. Insane. That's a nutty, nutty number. So follow me over there. All the other links will be in the description and the QR code right here. And thank you to our sponsor, SNHU. Um, super cool of them to sponsor being a local school, but their online program, let me tell you, talking about adaptability and change and innovation, they're one of the best. So use that link in the description and in the pinned comment, uh, request some information. What's the worst that could happen? You'll get somebody to call you on the phone and walk you through all their programs. It's a great option. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy, keep watching great movies, and I'll talk to you all soon.